Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Vancouver, British Columbia for OpenStack Summit. This is SiliconANGLE. Media is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman. Our next guest is a user, a customer of OpenStack, rolling it out. He's got scar tissue to prove it. Nick Gerasimatos. Gira That's correct. Director of Engineering and Cloud Search at FICO. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we love talking with, with users, practitioners, because one, it's emerging, it's exciting, a lot of new stuff in there, but there's a lot of opportunities to, to create a lever of innovation. Agreed. Share your story, what are you guys doing, what was the big picture, OpenStack, obviously private cloud initiatives, share a little bit about what the environment is, what you guys are doing, what was the business objective, and we can jump into it. Okay, so uh, traditionally FICO has always been a very on-premise, um, provider, so we, we would always deploy you know, hardware at a lot of tier one uh, banks, financial institutions, government institutions, so on and so forth, and what we realized is that we were actually missing out on a very large uh, segment, small, medium-sized businesses, financial institutions, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it was imperative for us to kind of embrace a cloud strategy. Not every single small, medium-sized business is going to actually want to invest in hardware and a data center and have the, the operations to actually support that design. So I think that's really what pushed us towards you know, a web-centric model. So talk about the challenges. What was the main reason why to go with OpenStack? Talk about the, and, and, and the rationale behind it, and then what were the first couple steps you took? Okay, uh, so we, our legacy environment was based on uh, VMware, a very VMware Cisco UCS centric environment. Large, blocky, um, if you think of like vBlock and FlexPod and things along those lines. Um, heavy investment up front, and then you know, it trails off towards the end. Uh, what we needed to do was be a little bit more agile as we were going global, so that kind of pushed us to go towards the whole OpenStack design. Um, you know, we, low point of entry, uh, scalability, um, you know, software-defined networking, software-defined storage, without having to pay the penalties. Yeah, Nick, so can you walk us through a little bit, you know, how many people were involved in this project, you know, roughly size of budget, if you can share that, how long it took, and, you know, gosh, how many pieces along the stack did you need to change? So we, we adopted it aggressively. Um, the our CIO Tony McGivern, uh, essentially came to us and said that we needed to develop an OpenStack solution and implement it within a 12-month time frame from, you know, start of nothing, bare bones, to actually a fully, uh, you know, functional solution. Uh, and that's both the infrastructure as a service component and the PaaS component as well. Um, so it was it was a lot of work. Um, it was fun, but it was also stressful. Um, you know, having to validate different applications, uh, different products on that same platform. Uh, and some of these applications and platforms were never actually even tested on a traditional legacy virtual environment. Big SAN, things along those lines. Okay, so I mean, all in infrastructure and platform as a service. Uh, talk to us a little bit about kind of before, you know, blocky VMware, afterwards, uh, you know, your Red Hat customer using OpenShift, you know, so what, was it new people running it or retraining? Uh, what, what's that transition look so like? So we, we brought in a kind of a core group of, I would consider them to be a SWAT team or a technical team, um, you know, where we executed a lot of the vision when it comes to that. Um, we looked at a lot of different distributions of OpenStack. We settled on, settled on Red Hat because we have a very strong relationship with them. Um, we were actually one of the main customers that deployed OpenShift. Um, and so we wanted to continue that. And, and I think it's been mutually beneficial, um, specifically because we're not just consumers, we partner with them heavily. Um, so what was the I got to ask you, what was the biggest thing that you've learned that we could share with the folks out there watching? Because everyone is going down, a lot of new people coming into the journey of OpenStack. The sessions are packed. I mean, there's a lot of great technical stuff. Red Hat, Cisco, everyone's got us good stuff going on. What's the magnified learnings? If you can walk away and give three pieces of advice. Um, what to stay away from, what to double down on, what did you guys learn? So, one thing we did learn very uh, early on was that Ceph, while it's a great platform for software-defined storage, it doesn't necessarily fit all of our needs. Um, applications that are very latency sensitive or uh, IO sensitive, lots of transactional stuff. Um, you know, we, we realized pretty early on that Ceph wasn't going to provide the performance that we needed for that. Uh, so we brought in SolidFire from that design perspective to guarantee SLAs, guarantee performance. Um, there's other reasons why we brought them in as well. 
the other thing we lear learned pretty quickly was that Neutron, at least in the older versions of OpenStack, was not quite ready for uh, production. So that was uh, something we had to learn through very quickly. Um, and then the upgrade cycle. So, so, so I'm sorry, just poking that. So what did you do since Neutron wasn't quite ready for your production environment? Well, you know, we looked at uh, Open Daylight. We looked at other different SDNs. Um, you know, the end solution is we did go with Neutron for our design, uh, but we also, you know, aggressively moved from OpenStack uh, version, uh, you know, five to six, um, and we're also preparing right now to go to version seven. Neutron's grown a lot in the last couple of years. It's it's definitely much more stable than it was in OSP4. Yeah, I, absolutely. We saw that taking some of the ODL pieces and, and moving them into Neutron. So uh, knowing what you know now, um, you know, what advice would you give to your peers as to, you know, when putting things together, that SWAT team work well for you? How was the politics internally as to, <laughs> you know, uh, managing some of that is, is always, uh, you see, you laugh. <laughs> you know, the, the, the technology has its challenges that we're all overcoming, but some of the internal pieces. It's, it's tough, um, you know, our operations team struggled initially to get their head wrapped around the, the distributed scale out design. Um, finding qualified engineers who have a lot of OpenStack experience, that's, that's also very difficult in the industry right now. Um, so. Yeah, personnel is hard. I mean, people are learning as they go along. It's cutting edge. We're all learning as we go along. Yeah. With it. We, we're learning from the architecture you know, components, the, the containerization that's going on, and everything is growing so rapidly. Um, you either have to either embrace the technology or it, the technology is just going to supersede you. Yeah, we were just talking with Red Hat's uh, SVP and one of the things we were talking about is that there's an engineering mindset going on which is fun and intoxicating at the same time. It's like all the new stuff and there's some, and there's some you know, really mission critical stuff on the table that mm -hmm. you can work on. So it's a lot of meaty things if you're into that. You build out mode so it's, it's, so it's appealing on one end. But a lot of this stuff's been around for a while. I mean, we've really served web services and we've heard SAML on the camera, heard that mm -hmm. decade old. This stuff's now prime time, yes. and it's baked out. So there's some some historical geekness involved around service architectures. Mm -hmm. So does that give the balance? Does that help I think people so. walk the tight wire with a net a little bit? Or I mean, I, I I think so. I mean, if we think of you know the first containers that were around was like Solaris zones, right? I mean, that was kind of the first containerization technology yeah. that was heavily used and adopted by user bases. Um, but then a lot of the tools weren't ready for prime time. Now that I think we're seeing a lot of with Docker, with Swarm, OpenShift uh, tying into cloud forms, um, you know, for a single pane of glass and uh, API extraction, um, I think we're actually seeing th the birth of a new generation. Um, you know, I know Canonical announced on Monday new, the new Lux decontainerization, um, and the density that they were getting from that was pretty impressive. Um, but you know, we use OpenShift primarily, and we've been very happy with it. And uh, the, the orchestration of how it's building into cloud forms, I think is really going to uh, unlock a lot of management and orchestration and automation that we've the been trying to The workflow management is a huge Absolutely. deal. Don't you see that as an opportunity this new generation? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Dashboard-based IT. We're, you know, like it is, it is. <laughs> and we're moving, we're moving heavily away from like the traditional administrator for the most part. Uh, we're moving more towards the DevOps kind of person. Yeah. Air traffic control for services, right? I mean, it's, that's more like... Absolutely. I mean, you know, no one working the, the yeah. ground anymore. Everything's moving in towards an automated way. Yeah. All of our deployments are automated, so when we stand up a new cloud regardless of the availability zone or region um, you know it's all done through automation uh, so it's repeatable yeah. we can guarantee the design we can guarantee the versioning final question for you Nick what is the out in the landscape as you look forward with this uh, the journey you're on you got a great couple great accomplishment under your belt with OpenStack you're moving forward what do you see out there that gets you excited I mean what technology you say that's going to be a lever of change that's certainly the next generation what can you point to saying I'm excited about those 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 technologies. So I think the most excited thing I was about, you know, that I heard of uh, today was, or actually I should say on Monday, was the uh, Keystone integration. Um, so Keystone right now, we have to run multiple versions of Keystone for each geolocation. Having it actually all integrated um, is going to be a definitely a huge help for us. You know, FICO, we do a lot of security, compliancy, big data analytics. Um, so, you know, we take security very seriously. Yeah. And that's going to actually help us and simplify things. Yeah, so so Nick, I, I got the, the last question for you on this is, you know, 
your CIO, you know, gave you a, an edict to really go out there, be bleeding edge, you know, break some glass out there. Um, you know, how do you give advice to, you know, people out there to say, you know, it's okay to do this? I mean, you guys work in an industry where things got to <laughs> gotta work. It's work. not like, you know, uh, little sideline things there, to, you know, traditional kind of enterprise mm -hmm. workloads that, you know, must stay up and running. Uh, why is it okay to kind of push the edge and be bleeding edge? Well, I think that everyone's kind of leaning towards that direction, you know, regardless. I mean, if you look at uh, traditional companies like VMware, they're also embracing con containerization. Uh, you know, every every major company, even including Microsoft, is embracing containers and the new scale up design architecture. Um, so, I would say that don't be afraid. You know, embrace it. it. It's one of those things, we're moving towards distributed architectures. Um, there's no longer these large blocks in traditional IT. Um, we're moving towards scalable applications. If you look at the amount of data that's being consumed and used nowadays, um, it's definitely moving towards a web-centric model. Nick, we really appreciate you sharing your insights and experience here on theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit, really appreciate it. This is theCUBE bringing you all the action, all the action from the practitioner, people building OpenStack. A lot of in production, a lot of stuff happening here on the ground. We'll be right back after this short break with more coverage. Day two of OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, we'll be right back. <laughs>